All right. Do you know the difference between stress and anxiety? Stress is our body and mind's response to certain life situations. When you make a bad decision, when you got a big test coming up, when it's the moment before the big game, when you fight with the friend, when we're under pressure, experience a rush of adrenaline, are worried or nervous about something, all that stuff, that's stress. And stress can actually be both positive and negative. Now, anxiety is similar to stress in some ways, but it's also a little bit different. Stress is usually short term. It's sometimes helpful, but sometimes not. And it's caused by something specific. When the test is over, when the circumstances change, when the fight ends, then our stress goes away pretty much instantly. But anxiety? Anxiety is next level. It's usually not helpful. It can be present for no obvious reason and usually stays with us no matter how circumstances change. Anxiety is an overwhelming feeling of worry, unease, or fear that tends to just kind of hang around. It can affect our sleep, cause exhaustion and distress, and make us unable to focus or control our worry. Anxiety generally affects us negatively and continues after the stressful situation is no longer there. My name is Jamel, and I've got some personal experience with this. I don't know about you, but for me, flying in an airplane gives me anxiety. It doesn't matter if I'm not gonna get on an airplane for two weeks. It doesn't matter if I'm in the airport. It doesn't even matter if it's flying over my head and I'm on the ground. Anytime flying in an airplane comes around me, I get anxious. And let's try to think of it this way. Anxiety is sort of like a hum. It's a background noise that constantly is playing in our minds. Sometimes it's really loud and sometimes it's quieter. It affects our thoughts, our words, our decisions, and pretty much every part of our lives. It's always there. Like for me, just the anxiety of flying in an airplane is just always there. It's always on and it's always playing in our brains. For some of us, this anxiety happens on a daily basis, while others of us experience anxiety based on a specific circumstance. For those of us who experience anxiety as more of an all the time thing, it's just the way we live. The hum is playing on full volume in our minds at all times. Sometimes we know what's causing the volume to go up, but other times we can't seem to figure out why it's so loud. Sometimes it feels like there's no reason, it's just constantly humming. You wake up, and anxious thoughts are blasting in your mind. You eat breakfast and 10 different worries are running through your brain the entire time. You go to school and the volume on your anxiety just doesn't go down. You go to practice and you can't shake the feeling of anxiety in your body. You get home and you've brought anxiety with you. You try to sleep and the anxious thoughts just keep you up at night. You live with the hum of anxiety playing on full blast throughout your day. And that's so hard because it feels like there's nothing that you can do. That constant feeling feeling of worry, fear, or nervousness that comes with anxiety is so strong that it starts to get in the way of your everyday life. It leaves us so overwhelmed that it becomes hard to cope, hard to manage, hard to move forward in positive ways. Others of us experience the same kind of anxiety, but it's all about one specific situation in our lives. Maybe somebody spread a rumor about you that wasn't true and you are anxious that people think differently about you now. You wake up and all you can think about are the words that were said about you and who believes them. You eat your breakfast and you're playing the conversation through your brain the entire time. You go to school and the volume on your anxiety goes up because you're convinced that all the people are talking about it. You go to practice and you can't leave the anxiety off the field because you wonder, did coach hear the rumor? And even worse, do they believe it? You get home and you brought your anxiety with you. You wonder how you can get everyone to understand that it wasn't true. You have a hard time sleeping because you just don't know how you'll ever not feel anxious about it again. In those circumstances, the anxiety is real. You can't sleep. You're thinking about the situation all the time. You're worried how it will all turn out. Sometimes the volume is really loud and other times the hum kind of goes back down and even goes away but it is caused by one of these circumstances, not an unknown reason. And honestly, either way, it's a really difficult place to be. Whether we're dealing with anxiety related to situations in our lives or long-term anxiety that doesn't seem to be related to anything specific, it's not the way any of us wants to live. Unable to sleep, worried about the future, paralyzed by fear, consumed by negative thoughts, it's not the way we want to feel. If you've experienced anxiety in any way, then you probably found yourself asking, 
Does it have to be like this? Believe it or not, someone who lived thousands of years ago actually had some great advice when it comes to navigating anxiety. He was a guy named David, the second king of a group of people in the Old Testament called the Israelites. But being king didn't mean that life was easy for David. In fact, life was really, really challenging at times. David faced temptations, threats, difficult decisions, captivity, major mistakes loss, disappointment. In other words, David had a lot of reasons to experience a lot of anxiety. I imagine that the volume on his anxiety was often turned all the way up. But what I love about David is that he actually wrote down a lot of his thoughts, prayers, and lessons learned along the way. We can read many of them in the book of Psalms. This is a book of the Bible that includes many prayers, poems, and songs David wrote in response to what he was dealing with in his life. And in one of those Psalms, I think we can find some really helpful encouragement encouraging truths about who God is and all God promises to do for us when we're anxious. Let's read one together. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. So right away, David sets up an illustration. God is his shepherd. While this may sound weird to us today, it actually would have made a lot of sense to people back then because the shepherd was a very common profession. And what does the shepherd do? Take care of their sheep. That's their main job. They protect, care for, lead, and stay close to their sheep. Here, David said that God did the same for him. In fact, hundreds of years after the Psalm was written, when Jesus walked on earth, he actually called himself the good shepherd. That means that one reason Jesus came to earth was to be with us. And one reason the Holy Spirit lives inside of us as Christians is to do what a shepherd does for their sheep to lead us, to give us strength, to guide us, to walk right with us, to stay close to us, to protect us, to comfort us, to give us everything that we need to be with us. I don't know about you, but just hearing this list makes me feel a little bit better. I think it gives us a great list of truths about God and what God promises to do for us through the Holy Spirit when we're dealing with anxiety. Promises like, when we're not sure what to do next, God's Spirit can lead us. When we're worn out by anxiety, God's Spirit can give us strength. When we're not sure how to handle the anxiety, God's Spirit can guide us. When we feel alone in our anxious thoughts, God wants to be close to us. When we're overwhelmed with fear and worry, God can protect us. When we're overwhelmed with anxiety, God's Spirit can comfort us. When we wish we could do something to turn off the hum of anxiety, God can give us what we need. One of Jesus' disciples, Peter, wrote a letter of encouragement to a group of Christians who were suffering. And I think it gives us a helpful step when it comes to our own anxiety. Peter said it like this, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I love that Peter used the word cast, not give, not drop, not push, but cast, meaning literally to throw all of your anxieties and worries onto Jesus. Cause listen, I know the volume of anxiety is playing incredibly loud for some of you. And that makes it hard to give your anxieties and worries to Jesus. I know that sometimes it feels like the hum of anxiety is the only thing that you can hear. It's the only thing you can think about. It's the thing that feels like it will never stop. But can I encourage you to try to turn the volume up on who God is and all that God promises to do for us? Even just for a moment. Can you try to let that be louder than your anxiety? Now, if you're wondering how you do that, hold on. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. For now, I want you to know this. I believe it's possible that God can turn the volume down on anxiety for us forever. But I also know that this isn't always the case. When we live in a world where trouble, hardship, difficulties, and challenges are a real part of life on a regular basis. And that means anxiety can remain a very real part of our lives too. But that's why I think God wants us to know that no matter what we're going through, we aren't going through it alone. Look back at the start of Psalm 23, verse four. David wrote, even when I walk through the darkest valley. Pay attention to those last four words, through the darkest valley. I mean, isn't that what anxiety feels like sometimes? The absolute darkest valley, the place where no light seems to shine, the lowest point. Whether we're dealing with a short-term struggle or a constant battle with anxiety, we all probably recognize when it feels like we're in the dark 
Valley. If you're anything like me, you probably wish there was a way to get out of it. When it comes to anxiety, we want to go around it, ignore it, be given the shortcut out of it. But here, David reminds us that in order to get out of the darkest valley, we have to go through it. I know that probably isn't what you wanted to hear, but here's the good news. If we have to walk through it, we won't be alone. And it's the entire reason God sent the Holy Spirit to live inside our hearts so that we literally don't ever have to do life alone. And that means we don't have to manage anxiety alone. We have the good shepherd who promises to guide us, to protect us, comfort us, help us, and so much more. There are ways to walk through anxiety. And the good news for us is that God will give us everything we need to do it. Think of it like this. We have a toolbox. It's full of a bunch of different tools that can be used to do different things. When you're working on a project, sometimes you only need a few tools. So let's say you have a loose bike wheel. You just kind of need some plies for that. You can make that tighter, you're all good. But maybe you have a bigger project, like you're putting together a swing set for your little sibling or yourself. It's okay, you can be honest. And for that, you might need a hammer, you might need a wrench, of some kind, and maybe even a screwdriver. Little bigger tools for a bigger job. Dealing with anxiety is a lot like the tools in this toolbox. There are ways to walk through anxiety, and God gives us all the different tools we need to do it. Tools like prayer, the comfort of the Holy Spirit with us, counseling, scripture, medication, exercise, friends and family, listening to music, breathing exercises, and more. Sometimes we need just one or two of these tools to turn down the volume on our anxiety. And other times we need every single tool in the toolbox to get through it. Either way, that's I. Right. No matter what tools you need to pull out of your toolbox to navigate anxiety in your life, it is oh. Okay, those things are there to help you. They're tools created by God because God wants to give us everything we need to walk through the valley of anxiety. So today, as we think about the tools we might need to walk through anxiety, I'd love to ask us all to start with just one tool, remembering. Remembering is a great habit. In fact, God designed our minds to have the ability to remember things, especially things that are important. It's one of the tools in our toolbox. When the volume on our anxiety is blasting, we can turn up the volume on something that's helpful. So remember this, remember what's true about God. When we're faced with anxiety, we can shift our focus towards what's true about God. Remembering that will help us remember who God is and what God promises us. It will remind us that God understands, that God is powerful, that God is with us, that God cares about what we care about and promises to give us what we need. Then remember what's true about you. You are loved by God. You are protected, cared for, and not alone. And while you may not feel okay right now, I believe that you will one day because God has given you the tools that you need to walk through anxiety. So start by remembering that. Think about the tools you have available to you right now. If you're not sure, talk to your parent or small group leader about what they think you can do to help as you walk through anxiety. Because what's true about all of us is that God didn't leave us to walk through the valley without giving us what we need. So remember what's true and think about what tools might be helpful for you today. Because there are ways to walk through anxiety. Together, let's remember what's true about God. Let's remember that God promises to be with us and to give us what we need to get through it. And because of that, let's remember the volume of our anxiety doesn't have to play at full blast. One step at a time, we will turn down the volume as we walk through anxiety with God's help.